the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today's gospel is all about listening. So this little Johnny is at church with his mom, and all of a sudden he feels his breakfast didn't hit him very well. So he says to his mom, Mom, I think I'm going to throw up. So she says, Johnny, listen to me very carefully. Go out the back and go to the bathroom right now. Well, he takes off. A few minutes later, he comes back. And he says, everything okay? He goes, oh, yeah, Mom. Did you make it to the bathroom? Didn't have to. On my way out, I saw this box that said, for the sick. <laughs> Today is Transfiguration Sunday, which concludes the season of Epiphany. The season of Epiphany was all about seeing God's glory. After Transfiguration Sunday today, the Epiphany season is giving way to the season of Lent, a season of repentance and of changing the way we think. For the past three Sundays, we have been hearing part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is in chapter 5 of Matthew. Today, we have fast-forwarded all the way to chapter 17. So a lot has happened between these two chapters the time that Jesus was teaching that group on the hillside. In these fast few years, he has been teaching, healing, and generally doing things that was drawing more and more people to follow him, and also making the Pharisees and Sadducees angrier and angrier. And because of the healings and teachings, he now had a pretty large group of disciples. But in our Bible story today, we hear how Jesus led three of his disciples, his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, up the mountain. Not sure which mountain. Some people say it's Mount Tabor, Zion, others. It's a mountain. These three didn't know it yet, but Jesus was about to show them the end of the story, the story that God has been telling since the moment of creation, the story of the salvation of humankind. But you have to go back a little bit before this. In chapter 16, Jesus has announced to the disciples that he must suffer, he must be crucified, he must die, and he ascended again and be raised to life. But the disciples are not getting it. They don't really understand what he's telling them. They still don't really know who Jesus is. Well, in today's gospel, it is now six days later from the time he announced this to them. And he's leading Peter and James and John up on that mountain. And right there before their eyes, he was transfigured. Transfiguration means a complete change of form or appearance. Matthew writes that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Whiter than anything we could ever bleach. And then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, who began talking to Jesus, followed by a voice that spoke from this cloud that was covering them, that said, This is my son who I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Big exclamation point right after listen to him. After reading this passage of scripture, you may ask yourself, well, why did this event even take place? Why do all three synoptic Gospels of Luke, Matthew, and Mark, they all have this story? Well, I believe this event happening, this transfiguration, took place because God the Father wanted to answer the question once and for all for the disciples and for us, who is Jesus? There, if you notice, there are three major events that happen when they go up this mountain. One, Jesus is transformed, his appearance. The second, Moses and Elijah appear to him on the mountain and talk to him. And the third, God the Father spoke to the disciples there. All of these were part of God the Father's grand plan to, to answer the question, who is Jesus? The first event it, of answering the question, who is Jesus, was to reveal Jesus in his full glory. Jesus' face shone as bright as the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. If you'll recall, a similar incident happened in the Old Testament. We heard kind of the beginning in our Old Testament lesson this morning, but at the end, when Moses comes down from that mountain, 
after having been in the presence of God, his face is so shiny, reflecting the glory of God, that he has to wear a veil. In the same way as the glory of God was reflected in Moses, so God the Father has revealed to Peter, James, and John Jesus in his full glory. God the Father has given these disciples a clear and visual evidence of who Jesus is. The second event that happened is that Moses and Elijah appear and begin talking to Jesus. If you recall, Moses and Elijah represent the law and the prophets. And I find it noteworthy that after God the Father has spoken, Moses and Elijah disappear. And Jesus is all alone. As one Bible commentator put it, the law and the prophets have served their turn and have gone away. He, who is the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets, remains. So who is Jesus? God the Father's answer is that Jesus is the one who will usher in a new covenant. A new era is on the horizon. The old covenant represented by Moses and Elijah is going to change. And the new covenant is going to come through the death and resurrection of Jesus. The third event that happens is the actual, in this transfiguration was the God the Father spoke to the disciples and told them who Jesus is. Chapter, in verse 5, he says, While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It is interesting that when God the Father spoke, he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Who is Jesus? Well, God the Father has told us that Jesus is his son. So he reveals his full glory. He says he's the law, fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And he is his son. So what is the relevance of all this that happened in the transfiguration to us today in the 21st century? Well, you can find that in the final three words. Listen to Jesus listen to him those words mirror similar words that were spoken at Jesus's baptism but there's a difference he ends it with listen to him the father's love for the son calls us into action he wants us to listen to Jesus to obey Jesus to submit to his teachings to follow him the Father invites us to view Jesus just like he does, as the beloved Son who, with whom he is well pleased, and as the voice of the one who is worth listening to. But when we listen to Jesus, are we listening to Jesus in a non-edited manner? In other words, do you find yourself reading your Bibles and thinking, well, that's just asking too much. Or, I can't do that. If we find ourselves tweaking and diluting the Bible to fit comfortably around our desires, our hunches, our sins, and our idols, then, as the Apostle John warns us, maybe you don't know who Jesus is after all. How can we follow Jesus if we don't hear him? Every time we open the Bible, we're sitting down to hear Jesus. Like sheep with the good shepherd, we're listening for his directions. We're listening for discipleship. We're listening for direction, for comfort, for correction, for training in righteousness, and also for encouragement. All of these things, Jesus speaks to us from the Bible but you have to listen. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Beloved of God, there is a mountain of meaning in these words. Most of the pain in this world 
is due to our unwillingness to listen, to obey his words. Ellie Weissel, the writer and a Holocaust survivor, tells the story of a prophet who came to a city to deliver a message in the marketplace every day. After a time, people grew tired of him, and people just disregarded him, or they regarded him with amusement, if they looked at him at all. Finally, a small boy said to the pitying the old man, approached him and said, Sir, why do you keep crying aloud every day, year after year? These people here will never listen to you. And he answered, I gave up hope that they would listen to me a long time ago. I go on crying to avoid listening to them. In the journey to Jerusalem, the disciples are given a genuine moment, a transparent happening that reveals with clarity that Jesus, above all men, pleases God above all others. And he also speaks for God. It is this glimpse that will sustain these disciples in their discipleship well into the future after Jesus has ascended into heaven. They will continue to cry out into a world that is really not eager to listen to them. But for those that will listen, they will find a mountain of meaning here on this mountain of transfiguration. They will learn from heaven itself, this is my son, whom I love, but only if we listen. So the question that I would like to leave with you this morning is, who is Jesus to you? If you believe what God the Father said, then the challenge is this. Are we prepared to listen to what Jesus has to say in our lives? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to receive what you have to tell us and more willing to do what you require. May I not only come to you with my needs, my praise, and my thanksgiving, but also make a habit of spending time in worshipful listening. Help us not allow the distractions of social media and the busyness of life drown out your still, small voice. Help us to be guided in all things by you rather than our own imperfect judgment. All this we pray in your name. Amen.